Good morning, Wellington Square. Welcome to our service this morning. My name is Lynn, and I'm a member of the board. Today, we would like to focus a spotlight on Joy Magwood to thank her for her faithful service to this church community over the last 18 years. As our Director of Adult Faith Ministry, Joy is involved in many aspects of life at Wellington Square. Joy has a particular passion for connecting people through small groups. She has been leading her own small group for over 23 years now. Small groups give us a safe space to come as we are, share life, grow our fr friendships, and grow our faith. Many of our small groups are unable to meet at the present time. Some, through the wonder of Zoom, are still meeting and are continuing to support each other. In the coming weeks, Glenn is going to continue the story, the New Testament portion. If you need a copy of the book, please contact Joy and she will be happy to get one to you. Joy would love to have each of us in a small group, even one-to-one, -one, coming together each week to discuss what we have learned from the story. Joy continues to be a wonderful example of Jesus' great commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. We also want to thank all those who have chosen to become leaders of small groups for your faithfulness in discipling others, and of course, to the many of you who participate in, the, in small groups, caring and sharing with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your gracious and merciful love, love that you pour out on us with such joy. Touch our hearts so that we may come to understand the deep, unfailing love of Jesus Christ. We ask your blessing on the words and music we hear this morning to your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Would you join with me in prayer? Creator God, source of life in all of your creatures, all your creation redeemed and made new, we, we thank you that there's a day that's coming where all is being made new. We thank you day by day that you make yourself known to your people. We can see that your beauty in the heavens and we can see your glory. In the bounty of the earth, we know your generosity. In strength for our bodies and minds, we experience your energy, delighting in all that we have seen, known, and heard. You are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our time. You are worthy of our attention. You are worthy of the very best of who we are. You are worthy of our humble hearts. You are worthy of this time. You are worthy. For that, we give you thanks and praise. Be glorified in the service. Be glorified in your people. Help us to truly love you as is right and true. In Jesus' name, amen. Giving us your son and leaving your spirit till the work on earth is done. Jesus, my redeemer, name above all names, precious. Lamb of God, Messiah, oh, for sin a slave. Thank you, oh, my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit. a song a while ago and the person who sent it to me explained why this is a song that is very encouraging to them and one of their favorite songs especially during this time in the world where things can sometimes seem a little bit dark um, this song is an encouragement and we're going to do the song for you in just a moment but I have to say how as we are focusing on the verse love one another I have been so encouraged to see how the person who sent me this song, and I, I won't say a name and embarrass anybody, but this is a person who shines love and light into their community and into the church family by preparing meals, by delivering those meals, by decorating the yard for holidays and allowing the neighborhood to enjoy something that's a lot of fun. Um, and then even the words to the song that we're going to sing are right now up in their front yard so that people can see this message as they drive by for this weekend of Valentine's Day. And it's such a great story about how those words love one another put into action. 
The words of this song so beautifully sum up our focus over the past few months on love and on light and on hope. And so we're going to sing this song for you today. There's one day of the year when love is celebrated in abundance. Big red hearts passed to all of our friends, bags of the best chocolate consumed by the pound, cards, candy, nice meals, surprise gifts. It's lavish and lovely and reminds us of all the good things. But what does love look like when it spills to every other day of the year? Maybe it's food banks always stocked, hard conversations over hot cups of coffee, holding the hand of a stranger, sticking it out through hard times, sitting in grief, it's not even yours, delivering hope through a simple card, laughter and goodwill, provision, protection, patience, forgiveness before it's asked, walking a mile in another's shoes. We know this kind of love because we saw it. Love is the sun willing to hang on the cross the God willing to die in our place, the Father who had a plan to save his children from the moment he created us. We were always on his heart and still are every day of the year. Happy Valentine's Day, church. Uh, if I could, I would pass out a chocolate heart to you and to remind you in a tasty way that you are beloved 
of the Lord. I hope this day is filled with fresh expressions of God's love for you and in your home. I hope it's a, a warm and great day. This mini-series has really been all about loving one another. And last week, we talked about a couple of barriers to get in the way of loving one another. We, we talked about unforgiveness. It's really hard to love people if you're holding something against them. And the second thing is about sin. It's hard to love people when we've got big sin going on inside us. And so if we deal with unforgiveness and the big sin, it gets a lot easier to love one another. Um, today, we're going to be dealing with a, a topic I love. It's like, like, why should we love one another? Like, what's the motivation? What's the benefit of loving one another? In Ezekiel, um, we hear uh, of the prophet declare that something he's going to do into the future, that God's going to somehow download his heart into real living people. Listen to this prophecy. I will give you a new heart. I'll put a new spirit in you. I'll remove uh, from you the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I mean, isn't that the whole heart of Valentine's Day? This tender, compassionate, giving, loving heart beating within us. And, and when we live out of this new heart, allowing the spirit of Christ to be expressed in us through actively loving one another, I mean, it's, it's a day that heaven touches down wherever we step out. And, and this amazing heart transplant happens the moment we come to Christ and, and look up and ask from him only, the thing that only he can give us, forgiveness of sins and adoption as one of his. And then we're sealed with his heart for all eternity. Dutch Sheets, a Christian author, tells of a story when his brother was watching an open heart surgery. And during that time, the patient, his heart stopped beating. And, and when it came time to restart it, Despite all of the efforts of the team, they, they just couldn't get the heart start, uh, started again. And finally, the patient, uh, obviously unconscious, the surgeon uh, went around and whispered in his ear, we need your help. We cannot get your heart restarted. Tell your heart to beat again. Incredibly, in that very moment, his heart started beating again. There's something powerful that words can have on our heart. And as John the Apostle is looking over the church, he sees that the heart of Christ isn't beating in his people the way it should. And so he whispers these words to him, <laughs> love one another. He, he's whispering for the body of Christ, to let their heart, the heartbeat of Christ, be expressed in their living. I want to read for you now his word, 1 John chapter 4, starting at verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God if we love one another. God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this, 
is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment because he is so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear for fear has nothing to do with punishment and whoever fears has not been perfected by love. We love because he first loved us, loved us. And if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. John starts it off with just a simple request. Beloved. He looks at the body of Christ. Beloved, love one another. It's a simple call. It, he doesn't define what that looks like. He focuses attention on, on something w- and way more important. It's, it's, he wants to get at the motivation about why we're called to love, the the benefits of loving one another. It's like a doctor who sees you and begins to outline the benefits of of eating well and sleeping and and, um, exercise and reducing your stress. I mean, that's what John's trying to do. He's, He's trying to point out the benefits of loving one another, what that will accomplish in us and in the body. And so I want to kind of work over a few of of these points that John makes. And and the first point John is trying to get at is that we need to love one another. And love matters because we are God's ambassadors on this earth. He says, in this, the love of God was made manifest among us. That God sent his son into the world so that we might live through him. That we live through Christ. It is his heartbeat alive in us. The Apostle Paul says it this way. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. Although we are making this appeal, uh, we are making God's appeal, um, that God is making his appeal through us. It's like this movie, if you've ever watched it, uh, a famous movie named Avatar. We have a a man named uh, a Marine, Jake Scully, and he decides to take his place on a mission in a distant land of Pandora. And and through the wonders of technology, he's he's able to enter into an avatar. So he he looks like one of these different people. And and he, he looks like the Navi people. And he becomes an ambassador for the people on Earth. God's love for this world resides in those who receive his son's heart. We are not of this world. We we represent the living God, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And and the church is his body, his embassy here on this earth. And what goes on on in the embassy, uh, we are his representatives, his body, and it reflects on our king. And his call to us is that we would love one another as he has loved us. That this culture of love would permeate our culture here on this earth. And so when anyone would stand at the entrance of Wellington Square looking in and seeing how we love one another, how we interact with each other, how we treat each other, Jesus longs for them to see that it's a heavenly culture, his culture, a culture of love in which he's called us out to be. But that always leads us to a problem. Because to love one another deeply takes an ongoing effort. It takes energy, thought. And and it's not just to love one another on one particular day, like Valentine's Day, but it's to love one another every single day. It takes a lot of resources to be a good ambassador and, and to run a good embassy, the church. And John says that not only are we called to be an ambassador, but he he, he lets us in on where we can get the resources in order to love one another well so that this culture can see that we live in a different way than the culture around us. He starts off his letter by saying, love one another for love is from God. See, God is the supply in order that we can be who he's calling us to be in relationship with one another. He is our supply center. And all we need in order to be all he's calling us to be can be found as we come before his throne, asking for the grace that we need in order to love one another so that we can glorify him on this earth in our relationships with each other. I mean, a conversation at the throne that can happen in 
I, I often will have to come to the Lord and say, okay, um, Lord, you call, you love me. I know you love me. And you call me to love other people. But, you know, this is a big church and there's a lot of people in this church. And, and so, Lord, you've got to make it clear. Like, who today are you calling me to love? Of all the people, like, give me a name. <laughs> make it clear. And Lord, you know, I, how is it that I'm to love them? I need some direction. What is love? Uh, how does it get expressed to them? Is, is it a word that they need? And, and what is that word? Is it a gift that I'm supposed to give them? And what is that gift? Is it some time to call them up and just hang out with them? Is it an act of service? And, and what is that service? Is it something I should be praying for them? And, and then in my time in the presence of the Lord, he, he begins to allow that to shape in my heart. And then he urges me out in order to, to give what he's mandated me to give to you, my brother or sister in Christ. And I think some Christians are timid in order to go to the very presence of Jesus, asking for what they need in order to love one another. They don't understand that Jesus has given us an unlimited grace company card. John, later in his gospel, in his, in his letter, would, would say that we, have, we should have a sh full confidence in approaching God. And he says this in John 5, verses 14 and 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Well, we know his will is that we love one another. So he hears us. And if he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that um, what we ask of him, we will receive. You see, he's given us this huge call to be his ambassadors on his earth. And he will give us all that we need, the supply, to do that brilliantly. But we've got to tap in to both the calling and to, to, to the supply line that he has offered. And when we do... He's glorified. So, as we are living this call out, as we take his call serious, as we start getting the grace we need in order to be the ones he calls us to be, John is saying one of the benefits is that we begin to know that we are indeed sons and daughters of the King of Kings. That we get clarity about our new identity John writes, whoever loves is from God and knows God. And anyone who does not uh, love does not know God because God is love. When we love one another, we begin to know that we are God's. And it's so important to know that you're part of Christ's family because with that comes all of Christ's promises. And, and, you know, I could say that you're part of God's family and, 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 I, and you could say, I understand all that he did for me on the cross. And I've accepted his offer. And, uh, and, and you've, you've come and taken Joy's membership class and you've been baptized. I mean, you were sprinkled. You were fully immersed. You were dunked three times. But let's be honest, sometimes you doubt, right? I mean, is my name really in the Lamb's book of life? But when you tell your heart to beat with Christ's love and you actually start living it as a verb in loving one another, all those doubts like lift off you and you know that you are God's. And you know God. That's what John is saying. I like to tell you the story of a woman who, who found this out as she was living out this call to love one another. Uh, this woman, Carol, came to me after church service one Sunday, and, and she said, are, are you okay, Glenn? And I said, uh, yeah, by the grace of God. Like last night, I was late coming from a conference, and I was on the QEW, and I was by the, uh, between Hamilton and uh, Niagara Falls, and it was like white out. I couldn't see a thing. And I was certain I was going to be, like, killed. I didn't know how, what to do, whether to go or to stop. I was, like, 
petrified. And, and I said, I, I didn't know how I got home, but I got home. It was a miracle. And, and she smiled in this moment. And she said, you know what? I know why God woke me up at two in the morning and called me to pray for you and your safety. You see, you see two things happened in that moment. <laughs> First, I mean, we were both amazed at, at the wonder of God's love. How God had worked through an, a daughter of his own to pray for a son of his own and that God had partnered with her in order to protect me. And second, she knew that she is part of God's family. She knew God. She could hear his voice and she could walk in his way of love. And I could always tell her, I could remind her of this story and say, you're part of God's forever family. Your name I know is in the Lamb's book of life. I will see you there. She could point to this moment and with full assurance, no. Because only the Lord's know his voice. She let the heartbeat of Christ be expressed in her getting up and listening and bending and praying for me with fervent prayer. There could be no doubt in her heart, certainly not in mine, that she's the child of the King of Kings. See, we're not just ambassadors given the supply to love one another and show God's embassy here on this earth. No, no, no. We are sons and daughters of the living King. And when we love one another, that becomes more and more revealed to us. So you might be having like a low self-esteem day. I mean, it's February, it's the blues. And, and you, you might be uh, not really understanding who you are. But when you love one another, that's revealed. You are the son and daughter of the king of kings. That edict is forever Always family. So we are part of his, we're ambassadors, we're, we're sons and daughters, and we love one another, we begin to know that more and more. And, and secondly, when we love one another, it becomes heavenly. Let me explain. See, we're going home. We're going to a place where love is the culture in which everyone exists. There's nothing but the culture of love. And Jesus makes a promise that where he is, we will be, and he's going to take us there. But while we're here, he's calling us to prepare for home. And, and when we love one another, John says, God is love, and whoever abides in uh, love abides in God, and God's in him. And so in heaven, you see, um, we're, we're going to be abiding with our Father. He, our Father is going to be so close, we're told, that he will be wiping the tears out of our eyes. I mean, the only tears we'll be praying is, why, why didn't more accept the offer? But we'll have an intimate fellowship with our Father that's deep and amazing. But we don't need to wait for heaven in order to have that relationship with our Father. You see, it happens when we love one another. God, the Father of heaven, abides with us, and we can hear him saying as we're stepping out in loving one another, well done, son. He is with us when we are about the mandate of loving one another, and our relationship with him grows and matures to a place where he's more than just father, he's friend. Friends are people who walk together going in the same direction. When we're loving one another, this is the direction in which the Father walks with us and abides with us. It's heavenly. Second, in heaven, the culture is love. And it's perfect love. There, there's nothing but perfection. That's all that, that's the air we breathe. That's the thoughts we think. That's the way in which we are animated every single day. John says that God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God and God in him, but by this is love perfected within us. As he is, so also are we in the world. In heaven, you see, 
we're going to be seeking the very highest good for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We'll have all the patience and kindness and mercy. I mean, every person in the realm of that kingdom will be our best friend. There's no more turmoil in heaven. Revelation names it as sea up and down. It's gone. But, but you see, John says that when we love one another here on this earth in this embassy, love is perfected. That the sea starts to, there's no more nonsense. And, and as we live it out, we're getting better and better and better. And so when we step into the kingdom of heaven, it's, we know how to live and behave in that culture. And like anything, as we practice it, we get better. Practice makes perfect, and, and that is true in this case. As we love one another, in verb, we get better at it, and it's perfected. It's heaven on earth. And finally, John says that it's heavenly in this way, that it, there's no fear. In heaven, there's no fear. We're not worried about judgment. We're not worried about anything. I mean, all eternity, we'll be walking with the King of Kings. Every day, every moment, we'll be absolutely fully satisfied, fully fulfilled about great and glorious adventures. John writes, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and he who fears has not been perfected by love. In heaven, you're not going to worry about judgment. The days of confessing sin will be over. There's nothing in us to confess. We're utterly pure, blameless, spotless. We're bringing the Father great joy every time he sees us. He smiles with great joy. But we don't need to wait until we get home in order for fear to be vanquished in our souls. It happens when we love one another. Loving each other matters because it's heavenly. You know, we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that prayer is answered when we love one another. Heaven touches down in our embassy, in our community. When we love one another, we, we, we know the very presence of our Father. We abide in him and we're perfected in love. We get better at it and fear is vanquished from us. And so I was thinking, application for this week this year, I mean, today's Valentine's Day, and it's the day that we take effort and energy to, to love one another. But what if we purpose for today and that this day would be every, let's say every week, that we would go to the Lord and, and we'd ask him, who in the body of Christ would you have me love today? And then we would just wait for a moment and we say, you know what, I'm on assignment, God, let me know. And then we'd ask him, get some details. And then we would seek out his grace, like all that we need in order to do that. Well, give me the heart, give me the words, give me, like, let me be your ambassador, Father. And then we step out in faith. And then we, we let a, before we do that, we call up a friend and we say, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I, I just want to, you know, share that with you. And then, and encourage, like, the partnership to get really good at it. And then repeat week after week after week after week. I mean, John is whispering into our ear through the scripture. I pray the Holy Spirit has joined with me and is whispering in your ear and in mine, let your heart beat again. Let your heart continue to beat with Christ's love. Love one another as he has loved you. John gives us so many reasons to say yes. We are ambassadors who bring glory to the King of Kings as we love one another. We are sons and daughters who are assured of our heavenly DNA as we love one another. We are beloved ones who enjoy ongoing fellowship with our heavenly Father. We are being perfected. We are fearless when we love one another. So we know why loving one another matters. 
And as we get more and more proficient at it, I'm sure like in no time at all, we'll hear the Lord say, love your neighbors as yourself. But that's a whole other sermon. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the call to love one another. Thank you for John's word. Thank you for the high calling of being your ambassadors here on this earth. Thank you for granting us all that we need so that we can be all you're calling us to be at your throne of grace. Thank you for revealing to us as we step out in this call to love one another that we are indeed your sons and daughters. Thank you for abiding with us that we can develop a friendship with you here on this earth. And that as we do this, love is perfected. We get better at it. And that fear is taken away from our souls. And we are free to love, to live, to have joy. Father, I pray you'd make this word come to life in every member of your body, especially those who are part of Wellington Square. Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. God of life, God of love, you created us and set us in a relationship with each other, in families and neighborhoods, communities and countries, cultures and nations. We give you thanks for all the supportive relationships which bring meaning and encouragement to our lives and have meant so much in times of isolation. Help us contribute what we can to sustain the well being of our community for all who call it home. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our faith and our future, there are so many pressures on homes and families today. Draw near to those who are struggling in economic difficulty and those burdened by the challenges to health and happiness this winter. Work with parents and children, married partners and next door neighbors who face conflict in their relationships to create solutions that express mutual respect and resolve tension. Help our congregation to support families, whatever their size or situation, as well as people living on their own, to know your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy and forgiveness, you call us to live together in peace and unity. We pray for our neighborhoods and our nation where people are divided and bitterness turns into resentment. Show us how to work for reconciliation as a pandemic stretches on. We pray for all those whose skill and dedication is needed 
to support our common life. Wherever we can, may we offer words of encouragement and appreciation so others know how much they matter to you and to us all. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, we give thanks for our church family and for the years of worship and witness offered here. So much has changed for us over these past few months. And we pray you will bless our leaders who have to think carefully and creatively so congregational life continues. We remember those of our number in need of your special attention today. Guide us all with your wisdom and insight so we find ways to reach out to each other in support and friendship. Open our eyes to opportunities to reach out beyond our own fellowship as agents of your healing and hope. For we offer ourselves to you in Jesus' name, in the words he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord bless you, beloved, loved of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. Have a great Valentine's Day. May his love lavish richly upon you, blessing you and encouraging you and guiding you and strengthening you. May you just know the deep and profound love your Father in heaven has for you. And may it be like wind to your wings, wind in your sail. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.